Hello, and welcome to the third annual Boston Israeli Film Festival. I'm Susan Adler, Executive Director of Boston Jewish Film. I'm so glad you're joining us for what I know will be an incredible week of Israeli films and programs. The festival is made possible through the leading and most generous support of the Fine Family Foundation. The Fine Family Foundation and our generous supporters CJP have been committed to the Boston Israeli Film Festival since its inception. We also extend our thanks to the Consulate General of Israel to New England, the IAC, and our many community partners who help us promote the festival. The Boston Jewish Film Board of Directors led by President Taryn Metzen and the very hardworking, talented Boston Jewish Film team, including artistic director Ariana Cohen-Halberstam, director of production Nisa Clark, Kim Shendell, Joey Katz, Joyce Betancourt, and Anne Bersani, all contributed their expertise to this festival. We've been looking forward to the Boston Israeli F Festival for months, and now it's here. And what better way to kick off the festival than with something sweet? It's my pleasure to turn it over to our friend, Leora Kushner of Leora's Catering for our opening night program. Enjoy this evening and the Boston Israeli Film Festival. Hi guys, thank you, Susan. And thank you, Boston Jewish Film for having me and opening up your screens for me. Um, I'm very excited um, to be part of this. Um, this is a new adventure for me. <laughs> done a bunch of cooking classes but this is the first Zoom class. Um, I know that, um, I know personally a bunch of you and I know you're logged on and ready for, um, for start cooking and with your ingredients and everything. So thank you all. Um, I just wanna say that this organization is really close to me. I've been part of it for many years at the beginning as a viewer. Um, and then started uh, catering for you guys, and I really miss you. But um, some of you kept me busy even during this um, very challenging and hum humbling year. So thank you all, and um, let's get started if you're ready. So this cake, we call it, uh, the, the literal translation is a biscuit cake, and this is why, um, the tea biscuits. But um, the American version of it is an eclair cake. And I think an eclair, just because of the filling, it's very, um, it's pastry cream. Uh, we use the fake version of the pastry cream, the quick version, the um, instant pudding. Um, this cake is super popular in Israel. Every kid knows it. Every mom makes it. And I love it because it's so simple. Um, it's super quick. Well, you have to give it some time to rest and develop the flavors, uh, but it's very quick to make. It's literally 10 minutes, um, but it's so good. And you can play with it. Once you feel comfortable with it, you can play and change it. And I'll give you some example as to what you can do with it and how you can personalize it but I hope you're gonna love it just as much as I do and just as much as every Israeli kid and I think adult too in Israel loves it. So we're gonna start. Um, I hope, um, if you're following me, we're, I'm literally starting everything from scratch. So you can just take your stuff close to you and just follow me. And I promise you by the end of this, you'll have a cake ready in the fridge. So I have here nine by nine. Um, if you have a bigger pan, that's fine too. It's just that you may run out of ingredients <laughs> a little faster. Um, if you have a smaller one, that's fine too. Um, I'm gonna use parchment paper, you don't need to. The only reason I'm using it because um, actually one of the viewers, I know she's logged in, um, she asked to purchase the cake as soon as she saw um, that I'm making it for you guys. Actually, that's a funny story. I thought that this cake was an Israeli creation, you know, that we in Israel like to think we invented everything. Turns out her grandmother, which is Russian, has been making this cake and maybe even before that. Um, so probably this, the origins of this cake is from Russia but um, I like to think about it as Israeli. So I'm gonna use the parchment just for you, Anna. Hi, if you're there, um, you don't need it. Okay. 
Okay. And this is it. The second step, the second step, well, you see here four packages. We don't need that much, actually. I just wanted to show you that there are all sorts of varieties uh, for this. Honestly, they all kind of the same. The, the flavor change is really mild. Whatever you find is good. Um, I'll use, um, this is, I think, the original, which means no flavor at all. <laughs> um, these are good because they have very little sugar in them. And um, once they get some moisture, it does look like a cake. Can we cheat and show them sure. like that? I'm, I'm not talking to myself. Ariana's here. She's holding the camera. So um, this is how it looks like this is the final version. So you can see that the cookies, after they sit a little bit, it does look a little bit like a cake. So. That's why I like using them. Um, so your recipe calls for a little bit of coffee. Um, I like to use instant. Sometimes if I have leftover coffee, I'll use that. Somebody is asking if you don't use parchment paper, should we grease the pan? No, no need to grease at all. Um, thank you for the question. I'm sorry I didn't mention. a little bit of boiling water and the reason is um, it will help the instant coffee to melt because I don't want any pieces of coffee in it. How can you get me the milk please? I'm sorry to just prepare it. And your recipe um, requires um, two cups of milk so I'm going to use half a cup. Good. Brand new milk here. Yes. Thank you. So about half. It doesn't really matter because we're not gonna use a lot of it. So this is ready for me to use. Um, and the second step is we're gonna do the filling, the instant pudding part of it, and that's gonna be the cream in between the layers. And the reason I'm making it now is because I'm ready for it, but I should have started with this because it does need to sit a little bit. Uh, oh yeah. So the recipe calls for two cups of, uh, three cups, I'm sorry, of heavy cream. But for the mixture, uh, we're just gonna use two cups of heavy cream and a cup and a half of the milk that we had from before. How can we get the heavy cream? I'm sorry. So we have a cup and a half of milk. I have a helper here. It's my husband. I'm not making him, he loves to help. Um, the other cup, the um, I think the recipe that you have um, calls for three cups of heavy cream. Save a cup, uh, we're going to use it for the chocolate sauce to top it, and then for a little chocolate sauce that we're going to use as decoration. So the instant pudding that I found at the, my grocery store is Royal. Um, I think Jell-O is more popular, and there may be some differences. Um, I think that the Jell-O, I'm not sure, but if one of you has the Jell-O, you can read the instructions. I think the Jell-O one calls for one packet and two cup, one packet of instant for two cups of either cold milk or half and half. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's not gonna change too much. This uh, specific brand calls for two packs for three cups of liquids altogether. But my recipe is fine, whatever brand you use. I'm telling you, this cake takes everything. Um, so we have uh, three and a half cups of liquids in here. If you want it a little lighter, you can try and go just with milk. Um, it will be fine too, it's just that the filling will not be very solid as we saw there in our little made up cake from before. Um, this is going to be a little loud, but it's going to be super quick. I'll see if it works. Okay, I'm 
bed after a little shower in the lab. <laughs> um, so what we're looking for, we know when it's ready, when um, I can, hold on, I'll just keep it a little bit. I need it to be hold, to hold its shape. And honestly, the more we wait, the more it will stick and be a little easier to work with. And I know that um, by the time I'll make my first layer, this will be perfect. So if you guys need a little more time to work your thing, we'll wait just a little, a little bit. Um, we're ready so to assemble. So, you have a so somebody yeah. was asking about what was in this bowl here. Sure. So we started with a half a teaspoon of coffee and I just, I let it, um, I let it dissolve with a little bit of hot water and then I added my milk. If you, any leftover coffee that you have will work perfectly fine. I don't know why I like to use milk. There's really no reason. Somebody's asking if this cake is fattening. <laughs> Oh, not at all. It's literally like eating broccoli and, and <laughs> I swear, like, um, not fat meat at all. And it's good for you. It has a lot of dairy. Um, okay, so our first layer, oh, we lost the spoon. It's okay. It will help the flavor. So, okay, this is the biggest difficulty with the cake. So I have a certain shaped cookies and a certain shape tray and i know for a fact because i've done this cake yesterday that it will not fit entirely to fill the cake so i'll need to do a little bit of construction um if, if you're a perfectionist and you need perfect layers a serrated knife i'll show you serrated knife um, will work the best to adjust this cookie to the shape of the tray. Maybe I'm not clear. You'll see the problem once we get to it. Uh, but don't dip and cut after. Cut before you dip. And um, that's, um, that's how you want to attempt it. Um, if you're not a perfectionist, it's fine. A little, some gaps is fine too. It will be just as tasty. Um, okay, so I'm starting. I'll wash my hands. I'm sorry, it's a little late. Anna, you may not want to buy the cake anymore. Mm -hmm. The question is, someone's asking, in a cake pan this size, how many servings um, can you expect? Oh, depends. Um, Depends how much you eat. Um, but I think, okay, for a, a slice like this, about nine, nine to 12. And, and this is a nice slice. In my family, we never cut slices. We just like level the cake and like dug in and dug in. Like and we figured like you, you don't really count calories if you eat it like this. So I dip it for a second. And I'm going to start layering them as close as I can. And this is a dessert you grew up with. Oh my dessert. God, yes. My mom was the best cook, so honestly that was something that we made it was too simple for her mm. but it's so basic and everybody loves it did you ever try that i've never tried it I'm, I'm oh you'll be surprised it. it's so simple and you know what maybe i'm overselling this because we grew up with this maybe that's why we love it so much i hope i'm not overselling it um it, it looks, I mean, it's similar, it seems to like a tiramisu and so that's right. So that's what I wanted to say. This cake, you can play with the filling and you can play with the flavor of cookies. Um, you can use graham crackers, you can add cinnamon to the vanilla, you can use 
chocolate pudding. You can change it um, and add some uh, cream cheese. You can add coffee to the mixture to make it more tiramisu-like. I've done it once with a layer of raspberry jelly and a little bit of fruit on top, but I didn't do chocolate at all. Hmm. Um, and did, they, did they sell this in stores in the when you arrived, or was something people I made at home? I don't think so, no. That's like a homemade... That's like a homemade um, dessert. Do they sell it in stores? I don't think so. Okay, so we have the first layer, and as you can see, I have like half an inch or a quarter of an inch of gap between the tray and the cookies. Um, hence, like, that's why I showed you how to um, cut, make cuts to the cookies if you wanna be a perfectionist and fill the, fill the whole thing. Um, you don't need to, because as you can see, the filling is pretty stable. It's not gonna ooze um, too much from the side. Uh, the chocolate sauce, however, at the end will ooze, but um, it's okay. So we're gonna start. Um, that's our first filling. And if you wanna go low on carbs, you can do just one layer of cookies and then um, top the whole thing um, with cream, but I like the layers. So I'm gonna do at least three or four um, layers of cookies. This is an offset spatula, I think. Um, you see the little dots, the little specks of uh, pudding? It's okay, after a night in the fridge, it will come together. The parchment is uh, being difficult. And this is an Israeli dessert, but it's not, you know, when we go to Israeli bakeries, maybe it's because it was just a homemade thing, but it, yeah. it wasn't ever really popularized in the U.S. as far as I know. Have you seen it around in Boston a bunch? No, but the, well, the flavor really, you know, resembled the Boston cream pie, actually, mm. because, um, no, you, we can't, we don't see it here. Well, maybe now you will. Yeah. But it is a thing in America. It's called an eclair cake. I actually made it once for friends who are not American, and she she told me about the name. Um, okay, so uh, that was my fault. I'm sorry. I, I moved this away from you. <laughs> that was totally your hands' fault. Um, so we're ready for the second layer. And are you putting them in the same direction or do you? Yes, turn, yeah. I don't know why. I'm weird. It must be easier to cut that way or it gets so soft um, that it doesn't it, matter. It doesn't matter really. And they're really close to each other. Uh, but if at the end I'll cut um, my, my cake slices will be exactly like the cookie. I'll have even layers. Um, And in the U.S., we also have icebox cakes, I guess. Is, is that right? Um, I don't know if the flavor can be the same. I haven't, I haven't seen too much use of um, instant pudding um, in America, but in Israel, we love it. We love instant pudding. Honestly, I, I think I ate um, a real pastry cream just when I came here. I don't think I ate it in Israel. Well, now it's different. Everybody's fancy with all the cooking shows. Um, you learn so much. So people are better cooks and better bakers. Is this something you make in your catering business too? Or is this? this? Yeah. Um, I made it a couple of times. That's how I realized people here don't know about this cake. I made it um, for Temple Beth Elohim Sisterhood um, event. And uh, they went crazy for it. You know, like, what is it? What is it? I cut it to small pieces. I realized that everything small is much tastier. Um, um, and maybe for one more event. People don't know it, so they don't know to ask for it. Mm -hmm. Now they will. Yes. See how pretty it already looks? So this is my second layer. 
And how many layers are you going for again here? As much as I have filling, I think one more. And how thick, just so people can see, how, it's maybe a quarter inch thick that you put it on? Just take your filling and divide it to three, about three. Doesn't really matter if the layers are not completely even. Okay. And if you're listening, you really made it difficult. Okay, and this is going to be our last layer. When you were kids, you and your did you have siblings who you'd make this with? And oh my gosh, we're um, friends. You're asking me childhood questions. <laughs> my mom, I mentioned she was said a it's a nostalgic cook. cake. So yes, but my mom never let us um, go in the kitchen. It was her territory, and uh, we would get in so much trouble if we just moved anything. Um, so that's what happened. I became a chef. Did you study to be a chef in Israel or? No, I'm actually an attorney um, here too. If you want to hire my services now, <laughs> I'm, uh, I retired. I practiced two years and now I'm like, I'm back. This is so much better. Were you cooking to, when you were an attorney? Would you cook on the no, side? Or not at all. Attorney? Actually, my husband is here. <laughs> <laughs> my husband was the cook he'll still tell you he taught me everything i know did you no no he didn't he didn't teach me anything um okay and we have one more layer so in israel i was so busy um and um i studied law um and um and then I had kids and I was really, I didn't have time to cook, nor I need to because, you know, food is great in Israel wherever you go. And you have your parents, you have your in-laws to help you and to, you know, host you for Shabbat dinner. So I had everything there. But then when we came here, I started missing uh, flavors from home. And um, when we came, it was 2002. Um, it, it wasn't like now. Mid Middle Eastern food is very trendy right now. Every Italian restaurant will serve you shakshuka, but when I came, nobody even knew what shakshuka was. Um, and I really missed the flavors and especially my mom's cooking. And I started, also I had some extra time for the first time in my life. Um, so I started experiment, experimenting with food. And um, I remember the first time I called my mom to ask for a recipe, she thought I was like joking with her. She was like, I think she's still at, she's dead. She passed away, but she's probably laughing about me cooking. Um, but um, I'm so happy now it's trendy and we have all these restaurants that will serve, um, you know, our lo local familiar flavors. Uh, but when we came, that's what made me just missing flavors from home. And at some point, I just became obsessed with food. And I don't know why. Maybe I was just hungry for a really long time. But I think that's, I mean, definitely food is a way that you connect to a place. And that's, oh, that's part of why we wanted to sure. bring food as our opening night for this festival. Because it's a it's, big part of the culture and of bringing people together. And um, this cake, by the way, is a great cake to make with kids and, um, and grandchildren. Um, you can let them arrange everything. That you cook professionally, do you cook for yourself at home a lot or? Um, 
I love cooking. So even after a long event, I'll come home. Well, not after a day of cooking. After a day of cooking, I'll eat the simple stuff like toast and Nutella or don't quote me, but ramen noodles. Uh, just because after a long day of all these smells and the steam and the spices, you want something super clean and flavorless. It sounds weird, but the next day I'll be like, okay, what's now? Um, I love to cook. I love food. And um, I'm, I'm, I feel my, I consider myself lucky to be able to enjoy what I do. Every aspect of it. I love the clients. I love, by the way, shout out to a lot of you there from the Boston Jewish film that made me, um, that helped me stay busy this year with all your creative projects and jobs. Um, okay, I think we're done. So see how nicely it set. And um, even though it doesn't perfectly fit the pen, it will stay still. Um, and now for a last part, um, we're gonna make the chocolate ganache on it. Um, so, I know that the recipe that Ariana published for you guys calls for eight ounces of chocolate and um, half a cup of heavy cream, but we don't need so much. Um, this amount um, includes a little bit of chocolate sauce to decorate the plate like I did here, but you definitely, if you want to go easy on the chocolate, you definitely don't need it. So I just have a cup of chocolate chips here. And again, if you like coffee, I love coffee. So, Anna, I hope you like coffee too. And I'll add half a cup, the um, half a cup of heavy cream that we saved from before. Ariana, do you want to take a picture of all the cookies? Yes. On the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, and now I'm gonna put it in the microwave for about a minute and a half. And this is what happens if you have a camera person around. This is not normal. There we go. It's going in. And a minute and a half. In the meantime, we can clean up. Do we know if anyone is following us and is doing the cake with us? Or yeah, if you're if you're cooking along, let us know in the chat and we would love to invite you up to show your cakes off um, before they go in the oven. Or if you have any questions for yeah, me. Yeah, please let us know. Because I'm, I'm super interested. <laughs> so these, I think for some people, the tea biscuits were a little harder to find in Israel, um, I imagine, there. Yeah, so um, I mentioned that I think the origin of this cake is from Russia. And, um, well, there's a great... Uh, Russian ethnic store that I like to go for the cured fish and now I realize why they have million kinds of tea biscuits you can use graham crackers you can use lady fingers whatever you use but these are very available in every grocery store where there's a kosher aisle I'm pretty sure wherever there's a kosher aisle you can find those tea biscuits that's where I get them um Ready? And do you eat this cold or do you eat it right out of the... Yes, so we need to chill this. So we have here half a cup of heavy cream, a cup of chocolate chips, and you can use whatever flavor chocolate chips that you like. I love dark and I added a little bit of instant coffee just for the extra coffee flavor because that's what I like. And um, it looks a little weird, but it will come together, I promise you. It smells delicious. Thank you. And was this a special occasion cake or an everyday cake when you would eat it? Um, no, our, okay. An Israeli special occasion cake, like a birthday cake, we have a recipe, which we can do in the next film uh, festival. Um, it's a chocolate, chocolate cake with 
actually the exact ganache on top the chocolate ganache and sprinkles that's our not just mine but i think every israeli kid birthday cake um so that's gonna be our celebration cake this is i don't know if every day but um i don't know maybe if you went to friends or for a shabbat dinner Is it we can mix it a little more to until all the little bits of chocolate dissolves but I don't know why I'm rushing there's really no reason for me to rush I can keep going until the next <laughs> soothing I'm sure anyone who's doing it along we're looking for you describe the the look of the ganache once it's done yeah um, if you want it shiny the secret is um, a little teaspoon of vegetable oil. Yeah. I don't care if it's not shiny. Um, okay, so we're gonna start from the center. If you did a good job with the biscuits and adjust them to the tray, you don't have to worry about the chocolate right now because you can just um, spread it freely. But um, I didn't do a good job, so I'm gonna go very gently now. And someone commented here that Wegmans has many kinds of these biscuits also. Oh, yeah. I think it's Judy because she was just looking for them. Hi, Judy. It was Judy. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't do a great job. Looks beautiful. So that's a pretty thick layer that you put on top. Yeah. Of. You can go as thick or as thin, however you like. Let me just move this back so you can see the edges. Yes. So, and this is going to the fridge to set, um, and it needs to set for at least four or five hours. Overnight is best. Um, cover it, but try not to touch the chocolate because it will stick to it. Um, if you don't have like fish or egg salad or something like this in the fridge, even uncovered is fine. Um, and I made one. Yesterday, don't look at my fridge. So after a full night, that's what you're gonna get. <laughs> <laughs> this is when it becomes healthy. You end up with this. Yeah. Uh, I wow. slice a little piece. Uh, where do you want it? Here. That's perfect. So this is how it looks like, and I want to show you how it sliced. So you see the things here, the edges, that's because, um, you know, the biscuit didn't go all the way, but you see how firm the custard is, and it's the same ratio. Um, I really followed the same steps that I did yesterday, so you can see exactly how it looks like. So I didn't have extra chocolate sauce, actually. I didn't have extra chocolate sauce. I like to go fancy. Really, really don't need it, but um, I want a picture for Facebook, so I'm gonna make it pretty. This is a little bit of cocoa. And a little bit of color. Okay, look at this little thing. <laughs> And this is it, it's ready. Um, guys, if you followed and tried to make this cake and you have any questions, if you're stuck, bring the cakes to me. I'll finish it for now, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to sleep. Um, 
but if you have any questions or if I can help you with anything in life generally, <laughs> um, let me know. If not, please fridge your cake and you'll enjoy it tomorrow, I promise you. So there is a question about the pudding. The pudding was what went in between the layers on yes. top of the biscuit. Mm -hmm. there, were, there was, and then someone else says, looks beautiful. If anyone wants to, I know people are going to invite you up um, if you want to come and join and show off your cakes to the rest of the group here. Um, someone said the chocolate sauce is super thin. Is there a way to thicken it? There, theirs came out really thin. With a cup of chocolate chip and half a cup of heavy cream, just add chocolate, more chocolate chips and pulse it again in the microwave if needed and it will thicken up the ganache. Okay, hopefully that answered the question. It looks like some people are coming up. So this looks like a good cake to keep in the fridge for an entire week while you work your way through a bunch of films. Yeah. Every film. Oh, you're taking <laughs> this one, Ariana. Someone says, will you be sending out the recipe with directions? We can send out the directions after to everyone who yeah. came. Um, yeah. The recipe, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Does the pudding get mixed into the heavy cream? Um, for the filling between the layers, what we did is we put a cup and a half of cold milk, two cups of heavy cream, and two packages of the instant pudding. And we whisked it for two, three minutes until it's starting to set. If people, I see people coming on. Oh, nice. People actually they can share it. share their cakes, turn turn their cameras on the cakes. We'd love Oh, that. nice, Yocheve. That looks awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Liara. Thank you. I'm interested if you guys... Did anyone try this before? I'm, I'm just interested to know. Has anyone tried this? Um, somebody says they haven't had a chance to make it, but we'll definitely try it. It's my kind of cake, easy and impressive. I think that's true. I mean, this is quite an impressive looking cake. It's, it's, I think it's delicious. I hope you guys like it. Um, part of what I love, um, part of the reason that I love to do what I do is just to spread the Israeli culture beyond, you know, the politics and the army and stuff like that. We have so much to offer um, and food is a big thing. I think because we're an immigration country and we all, a lot of us are high achievers in Israel, we push everything and every cuisine and the fusion cuisine to really the next level. Um, so I love to spread the Israeli stolen from Russian cuisine um, <laughs> and just show it to the world. Well, I think it's true. It's a, it's a multi, as we'll see in these films, it's a very multicultural um, place with cultures from around the world and the yeah. way they get in, in, incorporated. Um, I, I just want to share, do we have time or people? Sure, and people are starting to turn their cameras on and show us their... Hey, Judy, hi. <laughs> and Lee's here, so... People want to show up. And this. Lee, hi Lee. Good to see you guys. Oh my gosh, who's this? Oh wow, that's beautiful. This oh, guy, nice. Matt. Good job. Oh, I think Richard there is uh, working on the cake. He is, yeah. <laughs> I just want to share a story. So this is not my typical cuisine. Um, I'm, I'm Sephardic. And um, when I came to Boston, I told you um, Middle Eastern food was not really a thing. Um, but I, I really realized that I did an event for the Israeli consulate. It was a brunch and it was for journalists. Uh, and I made my, you know, regular Israeli breakfast thing, but it featured a lot of Sephardic items like the couscous salad, the shakshuka. And there was one journalist there that said, wow, this is Jewish, this is kosher. The, the Middle Eastern flavors with kosher didn't come together to her. And that's when I realized, you know, a lot of people here, well, now it's different, but a lot of people didn't know about this Sephardic um, cuisine. So 
I'm, I enjoy spreading it all over. This is not Spartic. But. <laughs> we'll have to have you back on another time to, to teach us some Spartic be happy. Israeli recipes. Um, if anyone else wants to share your cakes, please do. Otherwise, send us pictures. Um, you can put them on Facebook and on Instagram and tag Leora and tag Boston Jewish Film. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being with me. I'm sorry for the accent. It's Ariana's fault. Um, <laughs> thank you for spending the time, for learning something new and listening to my stories. And good night. And enjoy the film festival. I can't wait. I watch it every year. Last year was fun too, although from home, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for making it happen, all of you board members and members and whoever make it happen in Ariana. Thank so you so night, much, guys. Leora. Check out Leora's catering and also thank you. check out the thank film festival. Watched Joyce, <laughs> hi from California. Hi, hi everybody. I'm Show here. And hi eating Leora, thank you, honey. It was Thank great. You. I didn't make it, but I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> Good night, everyone. Good night.